A member from my YouTube channel added a question in my latest video in the comments there, and they wrote, can the video frame on the video slide be made larger in the new Captivate 12? It's a bit of an issue for my client. Thank you in advance. I think I know what this, this member of my YouTube channel is referring to. When you click on the Add Media Blocks icon and select Slide Video, by default, it's only going to take up a little bit more than half of the slide. Now, if I go ahead and click on the Replace Media icon in the middle of the placeholder video, I can select, let's say, something from my Assets Store here, a video that's there, right? And that works fine. And if I, of course, go under Alignment and Spacing and change that to Auto Fit Height, you'll notice that the video remains at its original size. And I think this is just an order of operations, but I would encourage everyone to go in to help and provide Adobe feedback on this because I believe more often than not, you're gonna to wanna to resize the video with it as well. Here's my workaround. It's really just an order of operations. Let's go ahead and delete that media block. We'll go ahead and we'll add another slide video media block here. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move my cursor to the bottom edge of this media block and resize it manually getting close to the size of the slide. Now I can just be sure that I'm auto fitting for the height of the slide by selecting that option within the alignment and spacing section of my visual properties inspector. And I can even go to full width as well if I wanna make sure that my video fills the actual slide. Now, if I go in and select a video, let's say from the asset store, I'll choose something a little bit different this time. You'll see that it will come in at full resolution and full size of my slide here. This even works if I'm using system video, video that's come from my computer. So if I choose replace video and I choose system, and then of course find a video that's HD quality here or full resolution quality here, and I open that up and I've got the full video there as well. The other thing you can do is what's previously known as event video, but when you want to have multiple videos on a slide, there is a different media block for that. For that, we'll need to create a new blank slide here. And if we go to our add media blocks icon and select the video grid for lack of a better explanation of this, it will add, of course, two placeholders, and we can do a few things here. We can get rid of the title, get rid of the body, and maybe reduce the number of videos down to one. The main difference between slide video here is that this video spans the entire duration of my slide. So in this case, it's a little bit longer than 20 seconds, and therefore my slide is pushed out to be 20 seconds. The same isn't true of event video or the video grid, if you want to call it that. But the nice thing is, is we can still do what I suggested before and resize it to fill the screen here. So there we go. It's going to not exactly fill the screen. We'll choose auto fit height and I will set this at 100%. But I believe because there's a play button and a progress bar and an audio control and a full screen control that this particular video type obviously doesn't take up the full width of the slide, uh, but it still works there. Now, if I replace this video again with, let's say, the video on my system here, that works fine. But again, it's not going to extend the duration of the timeline because this video plays independently of my slide. So this type of video is great if you want people to play a video and scrub back and watch it from beginning to end multiple times, or even you know adjust the volume or go full screen. They have full control over this. However, slide video, of course, a little bit more fixed. And of course, your, your learners can just watch this video from beginning to end 
And if you want to give them playback controls, you certainly can, but you don't have to. So hopefully that helps out all the members of my YouTube channel and the subscribers. I wanted to respond to this right away because I know you mentioned that you have a client who's waiting for this solution. So hopefully this helps you out quite a bit. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.